John Ramirez was a high-ranking priest in Satanism, pursuing dark spiritual powers and actively fighting for evil to rule. He's since left that life and he's here today to tell us his story. John, tell me why did you want to get involved in Satanism? Well, what's attractive about that? Well, I think attracted by Satanism at the age of eight to age of 20, 35, that was attracted to it was the power, the controlling, mm -hmm. the, the, the put fear on people. People respect you. You know, it, it was a superficial thing that was going on in my life for 25 years of witchcraft, Satanism, killing animals, drinking animal blood, astral projecting, uh, witchcraft for hire putting witchcraft on people, make a lot of money. I, all this stuff was going on in my life, and I, I, I did it because I felt accepted. I felt uh, important in my life for 25 years. And it happened, it went to your family, like you actually kind of inherited it. Was it was the bloodline of my dad, my dad, my aunt, uh, going on to, uh, you know, parents and all that other stuff. and. And then we ended up going to witchcraft church, you know, and it just became a lifestyle. You were born into it, basically. I, I, exactly. I was born into it, and I was baptized in it. At the, at the age of eight years old, I was baptized into the dark world. And your dad, of course, uh, rejected you and yes. bullied you and abused you, and so verbally. And in a sense, I guess, that opened up the door because Satan kind of presented like your dad, like somebody who would accept you. Yes, and, and, and the devil came, and he clamified himself as he, he loved me, and he would be my dad, and he would provide for me. But, you know, the devil can't love you because you made an image of God. Mm. And the devil will never love someone that's made an image of God. So, you know, that's 100% that's, that's clear. Okay, so you are absolutely enjoying your time as, as, a, as a warlock, as, you know, as a high priest. You became very powerful. How in the world did you start in a path to find God in Christianity? Well, God found me. Because in life, we don't find God. He find us, mm. right? Jesus come look for us. We don't, we don't have an idea who Jesus is, many of us today. So my life was, it was on October night. I was preparing for the uh, witchcraft month, Halloween. And uh, the month of October is witchcraft month. And December is witchcraft month. So I was preparing for witchcraft month to do witchcraft on people and, and curse people and curse regions and everything. And, I, and I, many times I challenged Christians, I challenged believers, I challenged church with demonic powers. And I was living a rampant life. I didn't even have a conscience. I didn't have, I didn't, I didn't have thoughts. I, I was like, the, the, I was really, my, my, I was, the demonic side was engrafted in my life for 25, embedded in my life for 25 years. And one October night, I'm sitting in my bed. I felt, uh, actually two, uh, a month before that, a month and a half before that, I heard the voice of God for the first time. He said to me, son, I'm coming home. I was watching TV, it was during, it was during the daytime. Son, I'm coming home. Uh, what are you gonna do with your life? And I couldn't believe it because I, I knew the voice of the devil. I knew the voice of demons, principalities, familiar spirits, territory spirits. And the first I heard this voice, I mean, this peace came over, this voice that t spoke to me and I, was, I shook it off. I didn't want nothing to do with it. I saw this uh, image in, uh, in, my in, my, in my living room. I saw an image that the sky was on fire. People were trying to run for cover. And actually, if you read the book of Revelation, it speaks about the sky being on fire. I mean, I read that years later. So I, that, um, a month and a half later, I end up, I'm in bed. I, for the first time, I'm feeling oppressed. I'm feeling depression upon me. I'm feeling, uh, you know, I'm feeling like suicidal. And I'm like, I'm like well, what, what am I going to do? And then I said, well, may I end my life and let my daughter keep the, the insurance money? You know, I got one daughter, and I said, she, you know, I leave her the insurance money. But that night, I, 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 I was, I was, I was, I, I said, Jesus, or God, whatever they call you, I'm not gonna serve you. I'm not signing for no Christianity. That's not my life. I'm a devil worshiper. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die as a devil worshiper. I want nothing to do with the church or Christ or all this Christian stuff. Nothing to do. But I felt like I was falling into the anesthesia sleep. And as I was falling into this anesthesia sleep, the only thing that came out of my mouth, it, was, it, was, it wasn't even my words. I said, if you're bigger than my daddy, the devil, you show me tonight, leave me alone. And I went to this sleep. It was like anesthesia. And I ended up in this train that was going so fast. And then Jezebel was on the train calling me traitor, traitor, traitor. And make a long story short, the train hit hell. I ended up in hell. And the first thing any person says when you end up in hell, I don't belong here. And I was walking through the portals of hell, and the ground was breathing. I couldn't, it's not like solid ground. It, it felt like marshmallow. The ground was breathing. I was trying to escape. I hear the wailing in the background. I'm trying to escape from this place that I knew that I didn't belong there. I tried to look for a window, a door to get out, and the devil showed up in hell and said, I'm going to destroy you because 
I, I was your father. I gave you everything. I gave you powers. I, 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 for 25 years, I, no one, I, I took care of you. No one messed with you. People were afraid of you. And now you're going to leave me? And I was like so, so confused. And the devil was talking to me in demonic tongue, by the way. And I was kind of confused. I no, I'm just confused. I don't know what I'm doing. I was, trying to, I was trying to negotiate with the devil. And then he went to grab me in the, in the cross of Jesus Christ in pain hell. And when the cross of pain hell hit the devil, because the cross appeared between us and I, I had shorts and I had a shirt. I, I, I couldn't believe how this cross would appear in hell. I mean, it was not like I took it out of my pocket. Not I mean, even that you called the name of God, I, really. I didn't even call the name of God. I didn't even know what the name of Jesus was. What I could do with it. And the cross appeared in hell, the devil felt like he was hopeless. He felt like nothing. I couldn't believe that the power of the darkness couldn't compete to the cross of Jesus Christ. He felt like someone just slapped him. He fell. And then I ran to the portals of hell. The devil appeared again. And I said, you know, the devil said, I'm going to destroy you. Then I show him these marks I have here. Those are the, my marks as the devil worshiper. I got marks here as a devil worshiper. I said, I got these marks. I destroy you. He said, that's my contract. I own you. When well, he went to grab me again, the cross of Jesus Christ and be in hell. And, and, and when the devil went to grab me again, the cross dropped him again. My spirit came back into my body like I was in ICU. Like, you know how they put those electrical paddles in your chest? Mm -hmm. It came into my body, and I knew that Jesus Christ loved me. And I turned my life to Jesus Christ that night, and I had a $100,000 worth of witchcraft stuff in my house. I threw it all, I had human bones, I had stuff, coffins, I had, you name it. I threw it all away to follow a daddy that I couldn't see, and I traded him for a daddy I can see, and I've been a Christian for 17 years and loving Jesus, and nothing like Jesus. We only have like 30 <laughs> seconds left, but tell me about a God who is so merciful that he would pursue someone who has declared himself to be an enemy of light, an enemy of God, actively pursuing to destroy Christians and goodness in the world. Who is that God? His name is Jesus Christ. And I tell people, if you try everything and you got the question mark, try the answer. His name is Jesus. I always tell people, try the Pepsi challenge. Try Jesus for 30 days <laughs> and let me know. Email me, let me know what happens. Because once you try home, you never go back. Your story is in this book, Armed and Dangerous. It is available on our e-store if you want to read a little bit more about it. And John, thank you so much for coming today you to share your story. Friend. I know You're we went amazing. through it pretty thank quick, you. and I know there's a Good lot stuff. more. But if you've been experiencing darkness, if you've been pursuing dark powers, if you've been involved in things that you know are not good for you, hey, we know there's a way out and we can walk you out of that. We have people 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They are here to pray with you. They are here to help you along your spiritual path. There is nothing, and I want you to hear this, there is nothing that you have done in your life that God cannot forgive. Give us a call. That number is one 866 273 If you get nothing out of today's story, I want you to know there is hope. We'll be right back.